Pete in Swansea, United Kingdom. Boy, doesn't that sound absolutely romantic? I live by the Swan Sea, where the swans swim in the sea. Ah, England. Anyway, he writes to me and he says, Hey, Paul, thanks for giving up your time to answer so many questions. My pleasure, sir. Here it is, Saturday afternoon. It's nice outside, but I'm in here with you, and that's okay because I feel actually very privileged uh, to be here, and thank you for allowing me into your, into your space. Um, it's an honor. It, it truly is. Um, anyway, in your opinion, are room treatments just as important as equipment and cable choices? My room is difficult with smooth, hard surfaces and a suspended floor. How do you begin to tame a room and how far do you go before the room is overdamped and sounds dead? Thanks, Pete. Well, that's a great question. And as we have talked before, our rooms are our friends and our rooms are our enemies. It's the classic double sword, okay? We have to have a room because, as I've said before, if we take our speakers outside and listen to them, they're going to sound lost. About as lost as if you went into the room and you completely damped it. If you, if you just put acoustic damping material all over the walls, mattresses, you know, whatever, and you listen to it, the system is going to just sound uh, muffled and dead. I mean, in the same way as my voice sounds muffled and dead, probably look better with this pillow, doesn't it? So <laughs> you can hear how that's just muffling my voice and it takes away all the life out of it. So we don't want to do that. But there is a combination of liveness and deadness that is the perfect blend. So what I recommend is start with the basic setup, okay? In in the audiophiles guide, the book I wrote that you can, you can buy from us or Amazon or whatever. We go through step by step how to set up the speakers. So, so you can position them for best sound, put them as close together or as far apart as you need, how to get that tonality going. And then the room comes next. And one of the questions you asked was, compared to equipment, how important is the room and I would say ignoring the speakers the room is probably more important or certainly as important as the electronics now speakers are different speakers man speakers are it speakers have to be really good or you're never going to get anywhere the best room in the world isn't going to sound very good with a crappy pair of speakers but the best speakers in the world are definitely not going to sound very good in a crappy room. So there is a, a blend that we have to have there. And my advice is, first off, never go too far in any one extreme. Start with what you have. Go to diffusion first, diffusers on the back wall. This is just uh, their background music system, so don't pay any attention here. But I like diffusers on the back wall. So You've maybe heard the term live end, dead end. This being the live end, this is where you want it live and diffused so that the sound isn't directed back at you and all you really hear and all your brain really pays attention to is what comes directly from the speaker. Now in back of you, many times you can have a really good effect by deadening that back room. But one thing to remember about deadening a room, it's nearly impossible to deaden bass. You can deaden high frequencies easily, I can do that with a pillow, but try and deaden bass. Can't do it. You have to build dedicated bass traps. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you have to go through. So the reason I bring that up is because when you deaden a room, you, you're not going to be able to get a smooth, flat deadening. It's going to be dead at the higher frequencies. And as the bass goes lower and lower and lower in frequency, the sound is going to come up and up and up, so it's very uneven. So you don't want to rely on absorption for your thing. So live end, dead end is pretty good, and that's where I would kind of start. Okay? Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you tomorrow.
bye.